Vitamin B12 deficiency can cause weird or atypical clinical findings. We're going to talk about those in this lesson and why they occur. But let's first talk about vitamin B12 and how we can become deficient in it in the first place. So vitamin B12 is also known as cobalamin. It is a water-soluble vitamin and it is an essential vitamin that is acquired from our dietary consumption. So it's an essential vitamin meaning that we have to get it from our diet. And we're going to get vitamin B12 from animal products and these are going to include meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy products. And vitamin B12 deficiency itself can come from either poor dietary intake, so this can be from not eating enough of these animal products and we can see this from vegetarians and vegan diets, but it can also be due to compromised absorption, meaning that you might get enough in your diet, but you're not absorbing it properly. And the classic case is going to be pernicious anemia, which is an autoimmune destruction of the parietal cells in the stomach that help to absorb vitamin B12. And vitamin B12 is important for two enzymes in our body, and not having enough vitamin B12 or having a vitamin B12 deficiency is going to lead to issues with central nervous system functioning and red blood cell functioning. And because of this, we can see weird or atypical findings with vitamin B12 deficiency, and we'll talk about those and why they occur as we go through this lesson. So the first set of findings that we can see with a vitamin B12 deficiency are psychological effects. So vitamin B12 deficiency can cause psychological and neurological issues. And the reason it does this is because of one of those enzymes we talked about before. And that enzyme is called methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. This is an enzyme that requires vitamin B12 as a cofactor. And if there's not enough vitamin B12 for this enzyme to function, we get a buildup of a toxic intermediary known as methylmalonic acid. So methylmalonic acid increases, and this is actually damaging to our neurons. It can actually lead to what we call axonal neuropathy, which means that there's damage to the axons of neurons. And more specifically, it's going to affect a part of the central nervous system, more specifically called the dorsal column medial lemniscus system, or DCMLS. So because of these effects, we can see some issues. Some of these can include depression. So this depression is going to be a low mood, but it's not going to be what we would call major depressive disorder because major depressive disorder occurs without a secondary cause. So if there is some medical cause that is causing the depression, it automatically is not considered major depressive disorder. And we can also see along with the low mood irritability occurring as well. Another common psychological finding with a vitamin B12 deficiency is decreased cognition. So this is going to involve impaired memory, understanding, judgment. It may appear like dementia in older patients. And this is oftentimes going to be something that can be looked at if a patient all of a sudden has some issues with their memory or understanding when they're older. So this can be something that can be looked at to essentially eliminate as a potential cause. And in some patients, we may actually find that a vitamin B12 deficiency is the cause of some of their impaired cognition. So in those patients that have impaired cognition due to a vitamin B12 deficiency, if you replenish the vitamin B12, they can have improvement of their cognition. So these issues with memory, understanding, judgment, they can all be treated. And again, that is going to be in those patients that have these issues because of a vitamin B12 deficiency. And these findings, these psychological effects are going to be something that's found more early on in a vitamin B12 deficiency. But as the vitamin B12 deficiency becomes more and more chronic, we can start to see other issues occurring like neurological effects. So neurological effects are again due to that increased methylmalonic acid that leads to that exonic neuropathy. And it becomes irreversible if it's left untreated. So the longer a vitamin B12 deficiency goes, the more damage that can occur to those neurons. And if left untreated, it becomes irreversible. So again, that increased methylmalonic acid leads to exonal neuropathy. And that again affects the axons of neurons. So some of the neurological findings we can see with a vitamin B12 deficiency include symmetric paresthesias. So paresthesias are going to be numbness, tingling, and burning sensations. They're going to occur mostly on the lower limbs. And what's characteristic about a vitamin B12 deficiency is that they're going to be symmetric, meaning that they're going to be found on both sides of the body. If you have it on your right leg, you're also going to have it on your left leg as well. We can also see a shuffling gait in patients with a vitamin B12 deficiency that have had it for a long period of time. So a shuffling gait is going to be what we would call a Parkinsonian-like symptom. So it 
looks like Parkinson's in those patients. And a shuffling gait is where the patient is often hunched over and they slowly drag their feet along, not fully lifting their feet. So they slowly just shuffle their gait, they shuffle their feet or drag their feet along while they ambulate or walk. Another neurological issue that can occur is reduced two-point discrimination. So this is the reduced ability to discriminate between two points or two pinpricks. So if a clinician were to take a pin and poke here and then poke there, they would be able to discriminate between those two points. But if they were to take two pins and get closer and closer together, at some point the patient will not be able to discriminate between those two points. So there's going to be a normal level of discrimination in people that don't have a vitamin B12 deficiency, but in a vitamin B12 deficiency, they start to lose that ability to discriminate. So the distance between two points where if a clinician were to take a pin and put one point here and another point there, if they have such a reduction of two-point discrimination, they may not even be able to tell the difference between those two points. They may think it's only one point being touched in those cases. So that is how you test two-point discrimination. And again, vitamin B12 deficiency, there is a reduced two-point discrimination. There's also reduced proprioception as well, so a decreased ability to balance. And this also contributes to Parkinsonia-like features as well. Some other issues we can see with a vitamin B12 deficiency include reduced reflexes, so hyporeflexia. So we can either see reduced or loss of reflexes entirely. And then poor cognitive development can occur in children who have long periods of vitamin B12 deficiency. So there can be developmental delay, poor brain growth, lethargy, and failure to thrive. Now, there are other findings of a vitamin B12 deficiency that can be found in the mouth, for instance, or the oral cavity. So vitamin B12 deficiency can lead to issues with lips in the oral cavity, and these are going to include glossitis. So glossitis is an inflammation of the tongue. This can actually occur in up to 25% of cases of vitamin B12 deficiency. So it's going to be more specifically inflamed and reddened tongue papilla. So if you were to look at the tongue, you can see these little dots that are very reddened and inflamed. And over time, the glossitis can become atrophic, meaning that these little papilla can be smoothened out and essentially the tongue becomes very smooth. That's atrophic glossitis. The patient can often complain of burning and pruritus of the tongue. So pruritus is itching sensation. And we can also see angular chelitis occurring in a vitamin B12 deficiency. This is what angular chelitis looks like. This is inflammation of the lips with cracking of the corners of the lips. So this can be something that can be found in other deficiencies as well. And the fourth category of weird symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency include blood disorders and related symptoms. So vitamin B12 is important in DNA synthesis and production of immature erythrocytes or reticulocytes. So these are immature red blood cells. And what will happen is that if there's not enough vitamin B12, we have a deficiency, and this can lead to reduced DNA synthesis and abnormalities of cell metabolism. So the type of anemia we're going to see with a vitamin B12 deficiency is a macrocytic anemia. Macrocytic meaning that the red blood cells themselves are larger in size, as opposed to something we might see with an iron deficiency anemia where it is a microcytic anemia, where the cells are smaller in size. If you want more information on different types of anemia, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And because of this, we can see signs and symptoms of anemia. So these include fatigue, shortness of breath, exercise intolerance, pallor, and arrhythmias as well. If you want to learn more about vitamin B12 and how it's absorbed, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.